Hello. A very good evening, guys. A very good evening. So I hope my audio and video is clear. Clear. So, so this topic for the YouTube session, which I am going to discuss, is infections and in gynecology, and mainly we are going to discuss MCQs on that. Good evening, Radhika. Is my audio and video clear, Radhika? Right. So the main purpose of today's session, as promised uh, by me yesterday, was that we'll be discussing infections in the gynecology, where I'm going to discuss some MCQs by which we'll learn the infections in gynecology. Okay. So we'll start the session. So let's start with the first question. A 35-year-old woman. Presents to her general practitioner with an offensive vaginal discharge. The discharge is associated with dysuria and vulval itching. What is the diagnosis? Right, I am waiting for you all to start answering. So a 35 year old woman presents to her general practitioner with an offensive vaginal discharge and the discharge is associated with dysuria and vulval itching. What is the diagnosis? C. Bacterial vaginosis. Right. Okay. So one thing here is... Uh, uh, so the three characteristic features which we have in this question which the patient was presenting to us was I have a B, I have a C. Right, so we have, if you see, observe here, offensive vaginal discharge, okay, dysuria and vulval itching, right. So if we take each one of them, so I have answers A, B, C, all options I have answer. Will candidiasis have itching? Yes, candidiasis has itching, but along with itching, candidiasis has curdy white discharge, right? So this has itching and curdy white. Trichomonas is also associated with itching and dysuria and greenish discharge. Trichomonas is associated with greenish discharge. Whereas bacterial vaginosis, bacterial vaginosis, there won't be any itching, no itching. And what is leucorrhea? Is it physiological or pathological leucorrhea? Leucorrhea is physiological, right? Leucorrhea is physiological. So if you go with the whatever I have written here, the best answer for uh, this question will be, now can you answer me what is the best answer which all of you can go for? No, if you see here, there is offensive vaginal discharge, dysuria and vulval itching.
So the best answer will be itching, dysuria and greenish discharge. So it will go for the B. It will go for B. Right? So here answer is B. Trichomonas. Right? Okay. So let's see the next question now. Let's see the next question now. I think maybe before I show you all the questions, we'll make a table of all the three vaginitis so that it will be easy for you all to answer, right? So I'll just make a table so that it's, it will be easy for you all to answer. So trichomonas. Candidiasis, and bacterial vaginosis. These are the three main vaginitis we should be knowing. Okay, these are the three main vaginitis which you should be knowing. So, starting with first trichomonas. Trichomonas, the clinical picture is caused by Trichomonas vaginalis, which is a protozoa. How will be the appearance of Trichomonas vaginalis? Is there a hand? So in trichomonas vaginalis, trichomonas is caused by trichomonas vaginalis, which is a, yes, it's a flagellated protozoa. It's a flagellated protozoa. Candidiasis is caused by candida albicans. Is it only by candida albicans or there can be some other candidiasis also which can cause candidas? Sorry, there can be other candidas also which can cause uh, candidiasis. Very good, Radhika and Ritesh. Radhika. Flagellated protozoa and it causes strawberry appearance. 100% correct. Candida albicans. Candidiasis is caused not only by candida albicans, but it also can be caused by candida tropica, candida gabbrata, and bacterial vaginosis. It is not because of some organ one organism causing it is. It is because of alteration of microflora. And most important is alteration of microflora by Gardenella. But apart from Gardenella, there can be other organisms also which can cause this. Yes, which can be caused by, it can be caused by other organisms also like Mycoplasma, Ureoplasma, right? All anaerobic organisms, Pepto, Streptococci, right? So that is for the bacterial vaginosis. So trichomonas, the discharge will be greenish associated with itching and dysuria. Whereas candidiasis, it will be white color discharge, whitish, curdy white, basically curdy white. And this is also associated with itching. But bacterial vaginosis, it is foul smelling, but foul smelling grayish white discharge. But in bacterial vaginosis, you have no itching. That's how we differentiate between the bacterial vaginosis from other, uh, uh, other differential diagnosis, right? So there won't be any itching. Excellent citizen, citizen. So yes, bacterial vaginosis definitely leads to preterm labor in pregnancy. It definitely leads to preterm labor in pregnancy. Trichomonas, strawberry appearance on first speculum.
Whereas candidiasis, you will see whitish blocks. So these uh, can strawberry appearances of both cervix and vagina. It is both cervix and vagina. Bacterial vaginosis, the differential, the main diagnosis is by Amsel's criteria, right? Amsel's criteria. I'll discuss what is Amsel's criteria. Management for trichomonas is metronidazole. Management for candidiasis is fluconazole. And management for bacterial vaginosis is again metronidazole. I'm telling a brief story so that you can answer the MCQs properly. And uh, metronidazole 500 milligrams BD for 5 days. Fluconazole 150 milligrams stat. The drug of choice in pregnancy also same. Metronidazole, fluconazole and metronidazole in pregnancy also. Except we avoid it in the first trimester because these are not safe in the first trimester. In the first trimester, we try to give uh, local betadine vag vaginal pessaries and douching, right? So, this is a basic idea which we should know about the, all the three. That is trichomonas, candidiasis and bacterial vaginosis. Now, before I go with Amsel's criteria, I would like to discuss some questions and then I will go with the next things, okay? Right, so I have the next question here now. A 25-year-old woman presents to, with a complaint of recurrent vaginal discharge. A gynecological examination is unremarkable. High vaginal and endocervical swabs are taken for micrological testing, but results are awaited. What is the diagnosis? What's the answer for this question? Yes, Priyanka, Manisha, Ritesh, Citizen, Citizen, Radhika, Akash. Excellent. So I have the answer from Akash. So this question you had to basically rule out the other options in order to come this come to this answer okay so basically i told you what is the how do we differentiate all the three and now you hear you don't have a clear cut anything there's nothing clear cut here right so i have to identify by ruling out other things here so here she has come to you with only recurrent vaginal discharge apart from that there is no other things which are given yes but there's another clue which is given in this question that is vaginal examination is unremarkable Vaginal examination is unremarkable is the greatest clue given to us. Now what is cervical ectropion? What will you see in cervical ectropion on first speculum? So I think I have been telling what is cervical ectropion from past 3 to 4 classes. So cervical ectropion is well, where the endocervix is averted outside. So you will see. Yes, it is a physiological. Cervical ectropion is physiological. And you will see endocervix coming outside and you will see red the color. Cervix looks red color. Okay, so yes, if sir, if if they told gynecological examination is unremarkable, I cannot take cervical ectropion into answer. Cervical candidiasis. If it is cervical candidiasis, what will be the gynecological examination showing you? What will you see? Obviously, we'll all see whitish discharge. Obviously, we'll all see whitish discharge, right? So, it is not candidiasis also. We have to see cardioid discharge. Now, trichomonas. Trichomonas, we are supposed to see the strawberry cervix and vagina. But when you don't have any findings, but still recurrent infections. So, sick, recurrent vaginal discharge. So, the best option for me here is bacterial vaginosis. So, the answer is C. Now, what I am trying to teach you here was... We all, you all answered perfectly well for all the three things that is trichomonas and uh, your bacterial vaginosis and candidiasis. 
but although we know those applying back and extracting the correct answer you have to learn that also so this question was by ruling out the other options right guys so we'll see one more answer one more question now we'll see the next question now so i am i am just showing you the pictures of different uh, organisms so what is this one so on uh, investigation of choice for first you can tell me what is this then i'll tell what yes akash what is this ronak very good ss so it's very classical this is strawberry cervix this is nothing but trichomonas and you also see the first you are you are also seeing the smear where in smear you are seeing the pear shaped cells whenever on a smear if you see pear shaped cells it is of your uh, trichomonas so trichomonas will look like pear shaped with four flagella and an undulating membrane okay and this is a strawberry cervix so it is a trichomonas very good so investigation of choice for trichomonas is saline microscopy what is the gold standard gold standard is nothing but no no few cells are different gold standard is culture what is the culture medium for trichomonas this is trichomonas where you are seeing pear shaped cells culture medium is the diamond medium or greenberg excellent ronak it is yes radhika it is the diamond medium and feenberg wittington's medium diamond medium and feenberg's wittington medium right let's see the next image so what is this so this is the classical curdy white discharge right this is the curdy white discharge and this is the candidiasis these are the candidiasis these are the pseudo hyphae these are the pseudo hyphae of the candidiasis as the cervical smear or the vaginal smear which is showing showing the pseudo hyphae right this is the candidiasis so what is the investigation of choice for candidiasis again saline microscopy where you will see the pseudo hyphae and gold standard gold standard is culture culture medium is saboroid agar sb agar right and this pseudo hyphae where which you see on the smear this is called shish kebab appearance shish kebab appearance right very good manisha yes uh, uh, rona kan radhika excellent that's the saboroid agar is the gold standard right very good sohini okay let's see the next one so what is this one so this is flu cells 
right very good this is few cells where you are seeing the bacteria attached to that is uh, your uh, coco bacilli bacteria attached to the vaginal epithelial cells this is the epithelial cell to which you are seeing the bacteria being attached so this is a classical uh, coco bacilli clue cells and this is called this is nothing but bacterial vaginosis right very good and can anybody tell me quickly the what is amsel's criteria somehow amsel's criteria is very very important so you should have 3 out of 4 positive pH more than 4.5, grayish white discharge, flu cells positive, and whiff test. What is whiff test? Whiff test is when you put 10% KOH, you will have fishy odor. Whiff test is when you put 10% KOH, you will have fishy odor. Right? so this is the uh, amsel's criteria which is important for us right what is the scoring given for bacterial vaginosis how do you score the bacterial vaginosis excellent akash very good what is the scoring system for uh, what is the name of the scoring system scoring system name is nugent scoring where on gram staining we'll find out whether lactobacilli is more or whether our uh, cocobacilli are more right very good excellent rona karadika and citizen very good correct right let's see some more mcqs now so that was about the vaginitis and some mcqs which were possible from the vaginitis so vaginitis is a very very important and a very simple topic With our good luck, every year we get one grace mark. I do consider it as a grace mark. If you get a question from back, those three vaginitis, right? Okay, let's see the next MCQ now. A 25-year-old patient comes with fever, pelvic pain, and foul smelling discharge. USG shows the following. What is the diagnosis? Chronic ovarian cyst, path ovarian cyst, ovarian abscess, or pyosalphins? I definitely will wait for you people to start answering. Then I'll tell you what is this. Right, I have citizen citizen answering B D. Very good, excellent. Okay, Mithul also answering B. Can you support your answer of D? excellent i see all of you answering correct yes it's d that is the your that is the pyosalphins right so why is it pyosalphins so this is nothing but so on the image whenever you see a saculation whenever you see saculations that is more in favor of your tubal abnormality so whenever you see saculation it is more in favor of tubal abnormality followed by next thing is that yes it's they have the fever fever pelvic pain foul smelling discharge all that support this as well as this is not an ovary in ovary the septations will be complete whereas here the septations are incomplete so whenever you see a saculation incomplete septations this is called cobweb appearance cobweb appearance very good ravikiran right which is the most common site of pid which is the most common site of pid
So most common site of PID is tube, fallopian tube, right? Okay. Let's see the next question now. In a patient with PID due to tuberculosis, which of the following statement is true? Right. So the next question. In a patient with pelvic inflammatory disease due to tuberculosis, which of the following statement is true? Actually, the question is wrong. Which of the following statement is false? I'm sorry, it's not which of the following statement is true. It is which of the following statement is false. I think now you can answer correct. Which of the following statement is false? Yes, very uh, correct Akash, chat box is very much lagging. I am seeing the chat box after a very long time. Uh, there is a lag in the chat box. I do agree with it. Very good, Ronak. It is the D which is false. It is the D which is false, right? So A is correct. Mycobacterium can be grown from menstrual blood is correct. It is associated with infertility is also correct 70% of the women 70% of the women present to us with infertility in tuberculosis ectopic pregnancy is common yes ectopic pregnancy is also common so whenever there is a tuber uh, because of the failure of pericubal adhesions you have more chance of ectopic pregnancy dysmenorrhea is a common presentation is false because initially they have menorrhagia followed by they have amenorrhea followed by they have amenorrhea right So, D is the wrong answer. D is the wrong answer. Okay. So, we'll just see, we'll just quickly revise about the tuberculosis. So, tuber genital tuberculosis is always secondary. Most of the time it is secondary. Secondary to, to some other tuberculosis. Most common site is fallopian tube followed by most common type is fallopian tube followed by endometrium. Second most common is endometrium. And PID causes exosalpingitis but fallopian tube affection of genital tuberculosis causes endosalpingitis. That is the infection comes from inside to outside. The infection goes from inside to outside, right? So it is endosalpingitis. So uh, how do I remember tuberculosis and endosalpingitis is? In India, we are rich in TB, so inside to outside. So it is uh, endosalpingitis. Next, 70% of them present to us with infertility. That is the most common symptom. And when endometrium is affected, when endometrium is affected, First, it leads to heavy menstrual bleeding, followed by hypomenorrhea, followed by it leads to asherments. Hypomenorrhea and amenorrhea because of the asherment. Root is secondary hematogenous root. Hematogenous root. Diagnosis is by, you can either take the menstrual blood, yes it causes the Asherman syndrome, you can either take the menstrual blood or you can do endometrial biopsy two days prior to menstruation. 
where which we will send for HP culture in LG medium. Methyl root is hematogenous. Root of genital tuberculosis uh, spread spread to genital tuberculosis is hematogenous. So you get from other uh, TBs, lung TB or uh, abdominal TB. From there, by hematogenous root, it comes to the genital genital. Okay, right, Mithil? Culture on LJ medium and very important is CBNAT. Nucleic acid amplification test. Okay, so I have a question here from Ronak. Uh, it doesn't present with polymenorrhea. It presents with heavy menstrual bleeding. Polymenorrhea is a frequent cycle. Heavy menstrual bleeding is frequent uh, excess bleeding. So they present to you with heavy menstrual bleeding because the initially there is inflammation set up by the tubercle bacilli. And due to that inflammation, you have vasodilatation. And excess blood loss. But later, when the bacilli start eating the endometrium, they eat up to the basal layer. They they just uh, erode up to basal layer, and that will lead to adhesions of the anterior and posterior wall, which will lead to amenorrhea or hypomenorrhea. Okay, right? And uh, ascending infections are not present. You don't have ascending infections. Very less chances of ascending infections in tuberculosis. It is 99% hematogenous. Okay. There's only one thing which was given in the books. Like if a woman sits on a sputum positive, uh, uh, sputum positive, uh, uh, then she can get the ascending infection. So that's very rare. Most common manifestation is infertility. 70% of them present to you with infertility. Right. Okay. So, what is the advantage and disadvantage of CBNAT? What are the advantages and disadvantages of CBNAT? Advantage of CBNAT is quick results, you have quick results, next, within 6 hours you can know the diagnosis, most sensitive, most specific as well as it can also tell the refactor. Rifampicin sensitivity. Yes, it can tell about the resistance of the rifampicin. And it can detect as less as 10 bacilli also. That is the sensitivity and specificity. It can detect as less as 10 bacilli. Excellent Avinash. Disadvantage is it is expensive and next thing is that it cannot differentiate between dead and live bacilli. Cannot differentiate between dead and live bacilli. Correct. So you have chance of false positive. Yes. Very good, Avinash and Akash. So the treatment is, you have, according to RNTCP, you just have two categories now, CAT1 and CAT2. CAT1 is newly detected cases, whereas CAT2 is all the defaults and everything else, right? So assuming this to be CAT1, so assuming this to be CAT1, what we do is, we give two months of HRZ. Followed by 4 to 6 months of HRE. 
for infertility treatment is once the tub active tubercular infection is gone then you have to treat for infertility for infertility it is IVF after tubal pupping IVF after tubal pupping that is you have to block or you have to cut both the tubes and then go for IVF right so that is regarding the quickly about the TB which I could which I could tell you all so we'll go to the next question now Yes, it is HRZE for 2 months and HRE for 4 months. Correct, Avinash. Okay, let's go to the next question now. A 37-year-old female on oral contraceptives presents with whitish vaginal discharge. She does not have soreness or itching. The discharge causes yellowish stains in her underwear. pH of the discharge is acidic. Microscopy shows normal number of lactobacilli. Most appropriate diagnosis is Yes, correct Avinash. In pregnancy it is HRE and HR and they have to continue the treatment, right? Okay, so I have an answer from Manisha as B. Waiting for some more answers. Excellent. So, majority of you are answering correct. So, first thing, she, is ha she doesn't have any soreness or itching. And most important, by which I will tell this is not a infection is, pH is acidic and it shows normal number of lactobacilli. When it is normal number of lactobacilli, it is obviously what? Leucoria. Now, I am not, okay, candida is also one thing where pH will be acidic. But I am not going with candida here because, because there is no itching. In candida you should have severe pruritus. But there is no itching here. So that is why the answer which will go is leucoria. See it will not be bacterial vaginosis because bacterial vaginosis number of lactobacilli will decrease. That is what does alteration of uh, microflora means. It cannot be chlamydia also because pH in the chlamydia will be alkaline. It cannot be vaginal candidiasis because vaginal candidiasis is associated with itching. So that's why again the answer here is goes for physiological that is leucoria. What is the only organism which can stay in acidic medium? What is the only organism which can be which can stay in acidic medium? So the only organism which can grow in acidic medium is your can the candidiasis, right? It's the candida. So that's why candida is the most common vaginitis in pregnancy, immunosuppressed, and HIV, right? So today uh, I end the session here. I end the session here. I have spoke about the uh, vaginitis as well as some MC on tuberculosis. I still have many other infections left that is I have PID to discuss, I have chlamydia, I have gonorrhea and I have ulcers. So I will come back tomorrow again uh, at the same uh, 8 o'clock on YouTube to discuss the rest of the infection. So I will just do it as a part 2 for the infections. Okay. And uh, all those who are new to my classes and uh, you can definitely follow me on the Unacademy app. It's the candida. It's the candida which is the only organism in the acidic medium. So you can download the Unacademy app and follow me on the Unacademy app. As well, today at night 10 o'clock, I'm having a free session. At night 10 p.m., I'm having a free session where I'm going to discuss MCQs on medical disorders of pregnancy. So today mainly I am going to discuss on hypertension, jaundice. Where I will discuss all the past questions which we had on hypertension and jaundice. It is a very 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 important topic and must to uh, attend topic. So do come to the class at 10 o'clock. Sure, Mithul. Actually, I am definitely taking a longer classes on the app. So, that's also a free class. Don't worry. That's also a free class. 
so again i'll be coming tomorrow at 8 pm only with the rest of the topic okay so thank you guys all the best keep studying stay safe educate all the people around you what is the importance of staying at home now and breaking the chain of this corona and do definitely stay safe if you are going attending any duties uh, uh, take a proper precautions if the if you don't get the availability of mask or uh, gloves say you don't require to work if you don't get the availability of gloves and mask that's very important okay thank you guys